Namaste my loves and welcome back to my channel and welcome to the ultimate backpacking guide episode four. Today's episode we're going to be talking about how to keep your money safe whilst traveling and also how to kind of prepare yourself to have your money in safe spaces before you actually head off on your journey. So before I went backpacking I actually had quite a few different bank accounts that I was keeping my money safe in. I had maybe three savings accounts but one account in particular which I really really recommend it doesn't have to be a savings account but you can just open Open it as a bank account and that is a Monzo card and a Monzo card is a travel card. You can get many different types of travel cards which I have looked into but Monzo seemed to be the best one. So a Monzo card is actually a bank account but it's all run through an app on your phone and it is super safe. When you do request for a card you do have to send a picture of yourself and a little short video clip. It sends off to the company and then they eventually send you your card in about three weeks time. So if you are going make sure that you get your card quite far in advance just so that you know for sure that you have it before you actually leave. So the great thing about having a Monzo card as a travel card, when you use it in another country and you use the contactless payment method, it doesn't charge you at all. You don't get charged extra, which you would if it was just your normal bank account. So with regards to cash withdrawals, you can actually draw up to £200 a month out of your bank account without getting charged and anything past £200 you will get charged a fee. Another great reason obviously to have a travel card is because you can monitor everything from your app and the app actually creates little categories for the different places that you purchase things from like coffee shops or clothing stores or anything like that depends where you go obviously I didn't use the contactless payment when I was in Asia at all but when I was in Australia and New Zealand I definitely used it then so it was really useful for that it's just great to have an option for something to use in another country without getting charged extreme rates on your normal bank account before I left on my backpacking trip as well I actually opened another bank account with my current main bank account so that meant that I had two different cards just two standard accounts and that was basically to cover me in case I lost my main card so I had two cards with me at all times and I only ever took one out if I needed to but yeah if I lost that card or say if I went for such a long period of time that that card expired I had a spare one just in case so I could move money over from my bank account straight over to my second new account and then I could just use that straight away so it's great because you can manage everything from your app but I really recommend just getting a spare card just in case some people actually recommend recommend getting a credit card. I never did that. I didn't feel the need to do that. That would be just to cover yourself in case you needed to come home all of a sudden and you needed money for the flight for example I managed to save enough money to have that left over just in case I needed it. The best way to keep your money safe whilst you're traveling is I will always say don't carry loads of cash with you just don't do it because I have witnessed someone having their money stolen from them not physically but I was in a hostel and one of the girls there lent the guy her key for her locker in which she had a wad of cash in there which she said was all of her travel money and we woke up one morning and she was going crazy because someone had stolen all of her money which was the guy that obviously had the key to her locker. It was a horrible thing to experience and I felt so sorry for her because she was saying it was literally all the money that she owned and I just you know part of me thinks don't don't lend your key out firstly because you know even though you think you might trust pe some people you just have to be really careful but again just be really wary i know people that have traveled with the money in their backpack and they've had that stolen from them people have hidden their money in a slot that they've sewn back together in their backpack and that's also been opened and stolen as well so i just really really recommend that you get a bank account or a travel card just to cover your back because if you get all your money stolen from you then then you're screwed really <laughs> Um, but when you're actually traveling out there and you need to draw cash out, in Asia, I was actually drawing out about £200 in one go and I was making that stretch as long as possible. So when I drew out about £200 worth of money and obviously I wasn't going to carry that with me when I was going about my day to day, I kept it in this little travel wallet here and there's a Ziploc here and I'd keep the money in there. And each day, if I knew kind of roughly how much I would need that day, I would just take just that amount out. So say for example, if I was in Thailand, I would just take out 20 baht for the day. And if I needed any more, obviously I would come back to the hostel anyway. I knew it was safe in here because this was within another backpack that I had padlocked. And then also that backpack would be in a padlocked locker as well. So I knew that it was safe 
safe and I never had any issues with that. So just make sure that you have padlocks with key codes on it because at least you know that only you know the code and it's not just a key that you could possibly lose. Make sure that you've got somewhere to store it inside that as well so it's not just floating around everywhere and make sure that you carry two padlocks because one you need for your bag and two you need it for your locker because most lockers in hostels don't actually have a lock so just make sure that you carry spare ones with you. Quite a few people carry money belts. I never did this but you can get them on Amazon and they're just like a thin little belt that you strap around your waist and it can be hidden under your clothing. I noticed quite a few men were doing that so you know that it's safe on your person. Otherwise if you are carrying your money out that day make sure that you have a little wallet or a little purse. I have a little purse like this. I've literally had this for years but it was perfect size for traveling with and I used to just carry a shoulder bag which came across my front. I'd always make sure that my shoulder bag was in the front of my person instead of on the side or behind without even paying attention to it. I'd always make sure it's in the front and my hand was on it at all times because if someone did come along and cut your strap then you know that you've got hold of it anyway. I just I'm always really cautious about things like that. I always make sure that everything's right in the front of me or just carry a some people call it a fanny belt. <laughs> I don't like the word of that, to be honest. Um, but just one of those front belts that you can get with a pocket in the front. Most people wear them for like festivals and stuff. They're really good to have because you know that it's literally strapped around your waist and you can just grab stuff from it. But again, it's just common sense. Just make sure that you're storing your money in places where it's hidden, where it's locked up. Also making sure that you're paying attention to where it is when you are out because you have to be careful of pickpocketers. It happens, but I've met people that have had their phone pickpocketed. And I don't want this to be scary for you because because honestly, none of this happened to me when I was traveling. I'm just saying it as an example that you need to be wary of just in case, because I know of it happening to people that I know, but it never ever happened to me. So just bear that in mind. Just be cautious, be sensible, use your common sense. The reason I drew out 200 pounds every time was because that was the maximum amount I could draw out before I got charged on Monzo, the 3% charge of drawing money out, because I would see how long that could stretch me across the month. And then obviously anytime I needed to draw any more money out, that was totally fine with me. But yeah, just make sure that you use your common sense, guys. Get yourself some padlocks. They're always essential to have padlocks. I would recommend getting two or three. Don't just go for one. There was times where I had to leave my bag out on my bed and lock it to my bed because there was no lockers in the hostel. So that was always something that I made sure I paid attention to. You know, you get a bit cautious about leaving your stuff out on your bed because you just never know. But yeah, just be really safe, guys. Anything I've spoken about in this video that you can purchase on Amazon, I'll link down below for you because there were things that I used as well but also things that I heard were quite useful. I hope this really helped. Anything to do with Monzo I'll try and link that down below as well. Anyways thank you so much for watching my beauties. I really appreciate it and I'll see you in the next episode.
Thank you.